Hey, how you doing? Thanks for joining me. In this video, I want to take a look at Rule 28204 in the 2015 Canadian Electrical Code, where we're going to walk through the steps required to calculate the overcurrent device protecting our motor bank. Okay, so 28204 is a little bit difficult to interpret, so I'm going to kind of break it down into an easy interpretation. What it effectively says is, when we protect all of our individual motor branch circuits with one main overcurrent device, we are going to again go to table 29 and we are going to apply the multiplying factor from table 29 to each one of these motors. However, we're going to use the multiplier for what the main overcurrent is. In this case, we have a breaker. Okay, so every time I use table 29 for each one of these individual motors, I'm going to apply the multiplier for a breaker. Okay, so again, when we use table 29, what we're concerned with is what type of motor are we dealing with, what is the starting method of the motor, uh, and what is the overcurrent protection device. In a previous video, we went through and individually sized our overcurrent devices for the branch circuits. Okay, we are going to disregard what the overcurrent device is on each one of these branches and only focus on, in this case, breakers. If I had a non-time delay fuse, I would apply the multiplier to each one of these branches for a non-time delay fuse. And again, if I had a time delay fuse, I would do the same thing. I would take this FLA times that, um, the multiplier for a time delay fuse. Okay, so as we walk through this, we're going to keep in mind we have two 30 volt motors, three phase, squirrel cage induction motor. And under each one of these, I have indicated full voltage start for these first three. And just to keep it different, our fourth motor there, we're going to go with an auto transformer start because it gives us a little bit of a different something to look up in table 29 there. Okay, so let's start with our 36 amp motor. I'm going to go to table 29 and find out for, again, a full voltage start, 230 volt, uh, three phase scroll cage induction motor. I'm going to write motor one right here. Motor one would be 36 amps times 250%. 2.5 gives me 90 amps. I'm not going to do, with this, do anything with this number just yet, okay? Now I'm going to go to table 29 for my 40 amp FLA. So we're going to say motor 2 is 40 amps. And again, motor 2 is a 230 volt three phase squirrel cage induction with a full voltage start. Now, even though this is protected in its branch with a non-time delay fuse, I don't care about that. I'm going to apply the multiplier for what my main overcurrent is. Okay, all I'm trying to do at this point is determine which of these is going to have the highest calculated value. Okay, so 40 amps times 2.5 for a breaker again, we're looking at 100 amps. Okay, we're going to move to motor 3, same thing. Motor 3, we're going to take our 50 amp FLA, and even though it's protected by a time delay, I don't care. I'm going to apply the multiplier, multiplier sorry, for a breaker from table 29 for that particular motor information. So 50 amps times 2.5, because again, it's a squirrel cage induction, full voltage start, three phase. We end up at 125 amps. Okay, and finally, my, oh, we're going to call that motor four. Motor four has an FLA of 60 amps. Okay, and when we go to table 29, we're going to look for our squirrel cage induction motor. We're going to look for our, it's not a full voltage start anywhere anymore. We have an auto transformer start. So when we look at table 29, we go down that column until we find that auto transformer start. Okay. And we find out that we actually have for over that 30 amps, we have a multiplier of 200%. So times two in this case. Okay. So for a breaker for auto transformer start, our multiplier is 200% now. So we're still using the particular information for that motor, but we're applying the multiplying factor for whatever our main overcurrent device is. In this case, a breaker, and again, 200%. And we actually end up at 120 amps. Okay, so again, the whole point of this is to determine which of these will have the highest calculated value using the main overcurrent device as our determining factor for that multiplying factor. Okay, so even though we have a 50 amp, um, we have a 50 amp FLA here, sorry, and a 60 amp FLA, you would think that the 60 amp FLA would win, 
but because the multiplying factor for that auto transformer start gives us a smaller calculated value, the number that actually wins is 125 amps. At this point, I don't care about any of these values. All we used those for was to determine which one had the highest value. Once we know which motor has the highest calculated value, we are gonna take that calculated value, so in this case, our 125 amps, and we're gonna add the rest of our FLAs. Not the calculated values, just the FLAs. So in this case, we're gonna go plus 36 amps, plus 40 amps. We've already got our 50 amp plus 60 amps. Okay, so that is my highest calculated with that breaker in mind for each individual motor plus the FLA of all the rest of those motors. We should end up at a maximum calculated or maximum setting value of 261 amps. And in 28204, it tells me I cannot exceed this value. So we're gonna go to table 13. And to protect this entire bank of motors, we're gonna buy ourselves a 250 amp breaker. Okay, so again, to recap, we are going to do the calculated value for each one of these individual motors based off of that main overcurrent protection type and whatever information I have about the motor at table 29, we're going to take that highest calculated value, disregard the rest of the calculated values, and we're going to add the rest of those FLAs to that highest calculated value, which gives us our maximum setting or calculated. We're going to pick our overcurrent based off of that we're going to go down to our next available size. In the next video we're going to use this same example and we're going to walk through sizing this main feeder conductor and how it goes into each one of these individual motors, what that main feeder conductor size is. Thanks for watching, hopefully this has helped.